mixtapes and DVDs is my era Facts. We did it better, yep. Pelly Pelly Leathers, Facts. ACG Boots uh. We 80s babies, Ooh. in early 90s, when it got grimy I was out of this world, you could not find no. me Unless you checked the lobby, hustling was my hobby Damn. We was lobby boys, yep. before Jim Jones Jano. You could catch me at Harlem eating Jim Bones uh. You know what it is, L.A.K.E. Lakey Johnson, G-Code, 21 Guns and Lewis. Now, originally, Lakey the Kid and Prodigy were cool. They had a few mutual friends, so they had somewhat a good relationship. Now, we all know Prodigy isn't from Queensbridge, so Lakey was friends with Havoc first. And a lot of the goons from Queensbridge in the neighborhood gave Havoc a lot of respect because of their love and respect for his brother, Killer Black. Now, after being released from prison, Lakey the Kid had the mindset of linking up with his fellow rappers from the neighborhood so they could do something productive. He felt like instead of robbing and extorting them, it would be better if they came together. And he basically used the lavish lifestyle that his peers like Nas and Cormega was living to motivate him to get more for him and his people. Now, according to Prodigy, he says back in 1999, he seen Lakey the Kid when he first came home from prison and invited him to the Mob Deep album release party at the tunnel for their murder music album now the day of the party he said he gave lakey the kid about 12 passes to get in and supposedly told him to get there early because the passes were only good to about 11 p.m now being that big noise took long mob deep didn't get to the tunnel to around 1 a.m now prodigy says he tried his hardest to get lakey and his guys in the tunnel he even told security to make sure they got him because they all had passes and he also left one of his people by the door to make sure they got in but lakey the kid remembered things a little bit different now according in the lake he says he tried to get in the tunnel with the passes prodigy gave him but the passes weren't valid so lakey and his guys waited three to four hours outside now when the mob reached the tunnel they entered in another exit and prodigy gave his word to lakey that he'll get him inside but according to lakey the kid when he did speak to prodigy on the phone in regards to getting him inside the club it seemed like p was playing games and he never really had intentions of getting him inside the club in the first place now laker called prodigy a few more times but did didn't get an answer because P had his phone turned off. So at this point, the people that Lakey came with feel like Mob D played them by not getting them inside. Now, according to Lakey, he said his people wanted to get at them anyway. Now, this just put the icing on the cake. Now, after Mob Deep left the tunnel, Prodigy and Lakey would speak outside about them not getting in the tunnel and also to let them know the people that he came with cars were stolen in the process. Now, there was some kind of dispute over them cars that were stolen, but Prodigy felt like it wasn't his fault, so he said he wasn't paying for it. Now, according to Lakey, being that Pete didn't want to pay for the cars that were stolen, his people felt disrespected and wanted to get at Prodigy. Now, as Prodigy and Lakey were having a conversation about the situation, supposedly Sherm the Worm hopped out the car he went to Prodigy, hit him with a two-piece and knocked him out. As he knocked him out, he went around his neck and took off his chain. Now, according to Lakey, he said Prodigy was getting beat so bad, he literally was crying on the ground. Now, supposedly one of P's people tried to step in for Prodigy, but he was threatened by Worm, so he fell back and got back in the car. But eventually, Lakey was able to calm things down, so he picked Prodigy off the ground and helped him back in his car. Now, according to Prodigy, at this point, he just felt like he was set up by Lakey the Kid. So now, P is in his car, and he pulled out his gun off the stash with intentions of shooting the car up that Lakey Lakey and Worm was in, but he decided not to because he had people in that car like Cormega. Now, Lakey says that's Cap because if P wanted to shoot anybody, he had every opportunity to do so. Now, as far as Lakey setting up P, Lake says he didn't have anything to do with it. And if he wanted the raw prodigy, he could have because he was at his house every day in Long Island when he first came home. Now, prodigy feels like Lakey was being sneaky and was basically trying to friendly extort them. So supposedly after prodigy was beat up and robbed for his chain, he said he no longer rock with Lakey the kid. But the next day, he said he did meet up with Lakey to get his chain back. Now, when he met up with Lakey the kid, Prodigy says that Lakey invited him to the Hit Factory to come hang out with Nas and others. And he said he actually went to the Hit Factory. He came with his gun and he came with a black guy. And he said Worm almost broke his nose. But he still came through to show them that he ain't give a up. Now on a Sub-Zero DVD where Prodigy was asked about this whole situation, he went on to say F Lakey the Kid and his muscles and he'll shoot Lakey the Kid in his muscles. Try to extort nigga and put pressure on He's like, fuck you nigga, in your muscles nigga. Shoots in one of your muscles, like straight up and down. Huh? 
to Prodigy was crazy. Now, I'm not sure if P and Lakey ever got to squash their beef while P was still alive, but luckily their beef didn't get too serious where anybody was seriously hurt behind it. Now, get in that comment section and let me know what y'all feel. Do y'all feel like Lakey the Kid was trying to extort Mob Deep? Or do y'all feel like Lakey the Kid had something to do with that altercation at the tunnel and he was just playing it off like he didn't? Or do you feel like Prodigy did him wrong and you know Prodigy ain't have no intentions of getting him in the tunnel that day, so he got what he got. But anyway, rest in peace to Prodigy. And if you're a fan of these old hip-hop stories, tell a friend to tell a friend about my page. Like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. More exclusive content coming. And I'm out. One.